Welcome to the Corner of Knit and Teak, episode 418. My name is Laura. I'm also known as Fluffy Kira on Instagram and Twitter. I blog over at the corner of knitandtea.com, and that's where this episode and every episode show notes will be. I have an Etsy shop called The Corner of Knit and Tea, where I sell my hand spun yarns and knitting patterns. Hi, how are you? It is Monday, April 10th. It is a not so cold, but definitely overcast and rainy day here in Kansas today, so I do have my light going. Um, I always prefer to record in natural light, but sometimes that's just not possible. So how are you? I hope that you had a wonderful weekend. We've had lots and lots of holidays um, this month. It has been Passover. Uh, yesterday, Saturday was Easter, and I also know that Ramadan is currently ongoing. So if you celebrate any of those, I wish you well. I hope you um, enjoy uh, celebratory feasts when you are able um, with family members. We actually just had a quiet weekend. We mostly hung out. Um, we had a run this weekend. Uh, every spring, my husband does a series of half marathons here in Kansas City, and I often uh, sign up for the corresponding 5Ks, or um, in this case this year, there is going to be a 10K. Um, so we have been doing those. We did our second this past Saturday, and the weather was perfect. It was 40 to 45 degrees in the morning um, and the sun was shining and honestly that is perfect running weather because um, you warm up as you run and it's nice and pleasant and the sun is a little bit warm but you are not sweating um, and overexerting yourself in the heat and that certainly can happen here in Kansas City. So um, the weather has been pretty good. Like I said, we're getting some spring rains today. All the trees are budding. It really feels like a fresh um, breath of spring. Um, and the weather has been in the 50s and 60s most days. So I hope that you're doing well, that you're staying healthy, and that you have lots and lots of crafty mojo. So today I looked over just to see if my tea was here because I remembered making it in the kitchen, but I didn't remember bringing it back. And I was like, oh no, did I forget my tea? I did not. So today I am drinking a favorite, even though it's the wrong season. This is number 512, um, Church and Mouse Winter from Church Mouse Yarn and Teas, and it's by Stephen Smith Tea Maker. It has an Assam um, balanced by more fragrant Ceylons um, and a little bit of smoky China Yunnan um, finished with some summer fruits. So it is a really nice, strong black tea. It's um, pretty smooth, just a smidge smoky, um, and it really has a nice flavor and I find that it sets me up well for the afternoon. It's about two o'clock in the afternoon and I am taping sort of on my lunch hour um, and then I'll be going back to work. So this will help me get through the rest of the afternoon. Um, and you can get that from Church Mouse Yarn and Teas. And I'm getting close to out and so I think I'm going to have to order another bag. I've been trying really hard not to um, replenish my tea stash so much um, because I am not getting through it as fast as I would like. Um, but there are a few that I know when I run out I'm going to want to replenish. So I'm drinking it today in my roastery mug, um, which is obviously a coffee mug, um, but really what I like is that it's an enamel mug and it holds the heat for a while, so my tea will be nice and warm for the next bit um, while I finish talking to you, and it will still be a little warm as I go back to my desk. And that's delicious and just a little bit of sugar. So I have lots to show you this week. I actually have two finished objects. I'm so very excited. So the first one you can see here next to me, right under Norman, is I finished the Linen True shawl. This is a shawl by Uta Narwatil, and I knit it as a uh, sample for Zen Yarn Garden. So let me show you. Um, as I said, those triangles would block out very well when I laid them out, and so this is now a substantial shawl. It is definitely my wingspan, um, just, I guess, right about my wingspan here. Um, and like I said, we started with three triangles in the middle, then some stripes, then we added another row of a bunch of triangles, and then we went into the border, and then it has these sawtooth edges, which I think I was finishing up when we chatted last week and I couldn't really show you, but now they are blocked. Um, all my ends are woven in, I just need to clip them a little bit closer, um, but this one is done and ready to go to the photographer, and it will be going soon. So um, this uh, was a fun project. It is sort of composed modularly. You knit the triangles modularly, and then you pick up 
makeup and knit the stripes on the, in both sections and then there's just lots of finishing every time I thought I was close there was a few more rows of this and that um, but it is just a really really lovely shawl this was fun to knit and I think I will probably end up making it again um, it calls for a uh, yarn with fairly frequent color repeats um, and what I ended up using was actually um, more of a gradient cake um, and that is from Zen Yarn Garden. So what I have here are the, that's the wrong one, um, but it is their super fine glitter base. It is um, relatively new. It comes in 400 yard skeins um, and it is 90% super fine superwash merino with 10% Stellina. Um, and my background color was called Eau Naturelle, which is undyed. I'm just winding a little bit that fell off here. Um, and I used almost a full skein, not quite. Um, I probably have maybe 10 grams left. So almost a full skein of the white. And then um, I had, I started with two gradient cakes and this is what is left. So um, I, and I knew that I would only use a bit. The gradient cakes are actually a hundred and set. It's the same base, um, the 90% the um, super fine superwash merino and then the 10% Stellina. Um, but these are done in blanks that are 170 grams and 680 yards. So um, it has a full gradient going from the black through the red and then into the orange and red and then back the other direction. Um, and as you can see, I used up most of the black and um, I got started into the red as well. I broke into this basically for um, right near the border. And then um, I think I broke into it in my last stripe and then did all the sawtooth in it. Um, and I knew I was gonna need that because it calls for approximately 800 yards of this, this contrasting, well, I guess this, this technically is the main color and the other is kind of just the background solid neutral color. Um, and it called for 800 yards of this. And since the cakes are 680, I had to break into this one. I haven't measured it yet, um, but now I have almost another full cake to do a shawl with. And I'm sure I have, um, my guess is I have between four and 450 yards left. So it's certainly plenty to do a really nice shawl with. And I could also combine it with more of this or another colorway um, and, you know, make it stretch a little bit further. So that is what I knitted in. And um, this is off the needles and like I said, ready to go. Um, it's a little hard to see the Stellina in the um, neutral colorway, but in these color gradients, you can definitely see it as I hold it back and forth. I'm sure you can see a little bit of sparkle. It definitely has a nice bit of sparkle in it. You can see it, um, but it's not really um, egregious. So it's not like you're going to be flashing everyone or blinging in the sun, um, but it just gives it a really, really nice finish. And I'll hold this up closer so maybe you can see a little, yeah, you can see a little bit of that because I can see it. Um, and you can see it just gives it a really nice sparkle and this is just this was a really fun shawl and um, I would love to do it again. I don't know whether there will be a class or a tutorial Tuesday on this one coming up with Zen Yarn Garden but look for it in the next couple of months um, and they've got a bunch of different gradients um, that I'm sure you'll be able to choose from because I've seen maybe 13 or 14 gradients on this new super fine glitter base. So the next thing that I wanted to finish was kind of a project on my own. It wasn't a sample, but I wanted to finish my yellow socks. Um, as I've said before, and I won't go into it too, um, too much, I am knitting uh, a, re a rainbow of socks this year. Six, seven, eight pairs. I'm not sure exactly how much. And I'm going to donate them to Knit the Rainbow, which is a 501c3 organization headquartered in New York. Um, and my plan is to donate these socks in the fall, like September, October, when they start collecting again. And um, last week I had one finished sock to show you and now I have a pair. So I have two. These were big socks. Um, I did talk about whether or not I was going to rip them out and I decided not to. Um, I had a few people respond that they have uh, family members with rather large feet and that they didn't think that my measurements were terribly off. Um, and so I am trying to knit socks in slightly different sizes because as we all know, not everyone has the same size feet. Um, and so I've been mostly using um, a combination of two patterns. Uh, the first pattern is David Schultz's Toe Up Sock Cookbook, which is basically a recipe for how to make a toe up um, sock with a gusset and heel flap. And um, you knit the toe first and then you use that to sort of get your gauge. You take measurements for your foot and then you figure out what the rest of the sock looks like by calculating kind of how much you need in circumference. And then from there, he calculates what you would need for your heel, how many stitches you need to add to your gusset. And it's all really, really simple math um, once you do the first little bit. 
I am combining that with the idea of um, the Rye Socks by Tin Can Knits, which are um, a pattern available from child to adult, um, and they call for worsted weight socks. I am not adding the garter stitch panel on the front um, because I want to use up every last scrap of my yarn, and my hope is that I will get the socks as tall as I can. That is also why I'm knitting toe up, even though I prefer top down. Um, and so I am using kind of the numbers from Rye as and the... Um, foot length as a guideline as to how to make my socks. So Rye has adult, small, medium, and large. Um, and most, I should say that most of the people supported by Knit the Rainbow are um, teenagers and above. So I'm just sticking with the adult sizes. It's not that, well, okay. Knit the Rainbow is um, a charity that supports LGBTQIA youth um, who are facing houselessness. And it's not that I don't think that there are smaller children facing um facing housing insecurities, uh, potentially even because of their, um, how they identify. But um, I expect that most of the people that are going to be um, receiving goods from this are actually teenagers and above. So I've uh, decided to focus on adult sizes. I guess I don't know if that's correct. I probably should ask. Um, but anyway, so I am making socks in adult, small, medium, and large. Um, and my plan is to make a couple pairs of each size so that these can find good homes um, with anyone. Um, and so these were kind of the largest size and the longest. And of course, that means that the um, that the cuffs um, and the legs are kind of the shortest. But I still think they're a pretty decent um, a pretty decent length sock. Um, and they're not. I mean, they're not anklets. They're not. They're certainly not up to your calves. But they're not anklets. Um, and so I used up every last inch of this yarn. This beautiful yellow yarn is dream in color, classy in um, Sundance. So, and it's really nice. It's basically a semi-solid with some speckles um, of, of darker gold in it. And I just, I wanted something that would be bright and sunny and yellow. Um, and I'm really, really happy with that. So that is my third pair of socks completed. In two weeks, uh, the Ply Away convention will be here. Two weeks? Yes, two weeks. Well, a week and a half. It will be... Um, not this coming weekend, but the following weekend. So yeah, a week and a half to two weeks. Um, Ply Away is actually a spinning convention, but it has a vendor market um, that has yarn and fiber producers um, and tools and equipment and all kinds of things. And that is local here in Kansas City. And so I plan to go. And so one of the things that I plan to shop for is a skein of green yarn for my green socks. If not, I'll just order something. Um, these I ordered from Eat Sleep Knit. Um, and I will go ahead and just order another skein if uh, necessary. The reason that I have been knitting in um, worsted, well, technically I've been doing DK and worsted weight is because the socks knit up really fast and I think they're really warm and cozy. And we're talking about places that have winter temperatures. So my thought was that I'd not only be able to knit more socks quicker, but they would also be warmer um, for um, folks who don't have a lot of resources and maybe living out of doors in the winter or just may not have a steady place to go. So um, I have been using skeins of DK and worsted weight because they knit up approximately the same. I think they'll make cozy socks. Um, and so that is also why some of my socks are short because in general, um, I'm working with skeins that are 250 to 270 yards. And so obviously I'm not getting like a full sock. I would probably need 300 to 350 to do that. Um, but I'm trying to work out of a single skein and I just divide the skein in half, start at the toes, work my way up. And um, I literally, on one sock, I only had maybe, um, on one sock, I only had maybe about a yard left. And on the other one, I had maybe two or three yards. Um, so I really did use up as much as I could. I might have gotten one more round out of that last sock, but I was counting and trying to match. So um, yeah, so those are done too. So that leaves me with somewhat empty needles. And so it is time to cast on some more things. So the first thing that I cast on was I cast on another sample. Um, and this is a sample for um, Zen Yarn Garden. And I am using a lot of the same yarns again. So some of this is gonna sound like a repeat. Um, I am working on the Sunscrap Shawl. It's by Jackie Verbeek. And um, I confirmed it is only available on Ravelry. It is a free download, um, but basically it is a recipe. And so it's not that you couldn't um, make the shawl without it. 
So it is a triangular shawl. It increases by one um, on every right side row, right side row, wrong side row. Basically you cast on three stitches and you start, um, you can use whatever pattern you want. Um, the pattern that she uses and the one she writes into the recipe is actually sort of a half brioche. You're brioching on one row and then on the next row you're just all knitting. Um, which creates, um, it does create kind of a little bit of an interesting design, although I think it might be getting lost a little bit in my pattern. I'll talk about that, or in the yarns that I'm using in just a minute. Um, it is designed basically to use up your scraps in your shawl. The pattern itself calls for you to use three fingering weight scraps held together, um, and you can change as often as you like throughout the shawl. It basically is just a big triangular shawl and a way to use up some of your scraps, holding them together to give you a really nice marled fabric. Um, the basic pattern is it cast on three stitches. On the next row, you knit one front and back and knit to the end. On the next row, you knit, um, and then you just repeat that pattern. So you do not actually need the pattern. Um, she basically says that you can add any stitch pattern you want. If you wanted to do it in linen stitch, if you wanted to add lace, whatever you wanted to add, you could entirely add that. The important point is you are increasing by one stitch on one side um, every other row. So you are creating an asymmetrical triangle. So um, I am doing this with Zen Yarn Garden Yarns, much like the last project. I have two yarns. One of them is... Um, one of them is the super fine glitter, and this time I actually have the right one. They're both super fine glitter, I should say. It's almost exactly like the last one. So I have a skein of super fine glitter in the natural, which is 90% super fine superwash merino, 10% Stellina, and it's 400 yards to the skein. So that is the card for it. And then I also have a really beautiful um, gradient, and it did not come with a name, although I looked it up on the website but I don't remember it right now. It came with a really beautiful gradient skein that starts in, um, and the skeins, I should say, the gradient cakes, like the one you see here, they are dyed in blanks, and then they are wound up into cakes. And you can get them either as cakes or blanks, um, and this time I think they just skipped the final step of winding it into a cake and they sent me the blank. So this one is a blank. It looks a little different, but it's the same thing. It's 680 yards, 170 grams, and it starts in the purple and goes to the red and then goes to the orange and then goes back out to the red and would go back out to the purple, but I've already knit that section. You can see just a very little bit of purple on the edge here. There's just like a last little bit, um, but I've already knit that section. I cast this on on Friday evening. Um, and started with it and as I said in the pattern um, one of the things she does is hers is made sort of in a half brioche pattern and what she's doing is on one side she is kind of slipping one with her yarn over and knitting one and she's just doing that pattern to the end and then on the other side she's just plain knitting um, so what happens is on the back you get definitely a purl side and then on the front you get um, what if I hold it close enough um, it does look a little bit like a brioche pattern. You can see your columns of, let me see, you can see your columns of knit stitches here, um, and then you can see kind of your brioche sections in there. Um, like I said, the pattern calls for you to hold um, three yarns together to create a marl, um, and I decided only to hold two yarns together for two reasons. One is, um, even though I do have two cakes of the, um, the plain yarn, um, it would only give me 400 yards total, and I decided that I could um, go ahead and um, make the most of the gradient and actually knit up the whole gradient if I used just one strand of white. Um, the second reason that I did it is because I don't think two strands of white with a gradient cake are going to give me quite the look I want for. I do really want the gradient to be evident. Um, and so I decided just holding two strands together would be fine. I'm using the needle that the pattern calls for, and it's interesting because I think, um, so brioche tends to be a little bit loose. When I knit brioche, the gauge is much looser than if I'm just knitting, you know, standard stockinette stitch or, um, or garter stitch. Um, and I know that this will open up when I go ahead and block it, but it actually feels pretty dense as it is now. And I can't really imagine knitting this pattern with three strands and not having it feel really, really dense. And um, in the photo on the pattern, she's holding it up kind of, and it looks like it has some drape. So I'm sort of um, interested to see precisely what, um, what gauge she knitted at. I don't even know that the pattern specifies gauge. Like I said, it really is a recipe. It's like grab a bunch of your scraps, make a triangle, add whatever stitch pattern you want, and at the end you'll have a beautiful shawl. 
So, what you can see is that I have started the shawl. This is the purple, and you can see that the purple then um, goes into the red, and there was a little bit of overlap in the purple and red rows. So I think it will look a little bit like the gradient. I don't think it will be quite as stunning as um, the way this looks, um, like particularly the sections where they overlap and whatnot, because I think the white will cancel that out a little bit. And so I'm a little mixed on the white, um, but I do think it's gonna make a nice fabric and I think it will make a nice shawl and it's gonna make a really, really large shawl. Um, like I said, I think my plan is to knit to the end of the gradient just because I think it would be really nice to have the gradient bookended, um, you know, start at the purple and end at the purple. Um, however, that means that I'm gonna be knitting 700 yards of this and this is already kind of a big loose um, fabric. So it means that the shawl is gonna be just ginormous, but of course I like a ginormous shawl. So I think I'm gonna try and do that. And because I do have two skeins of the white, I certainly can do that. So um, that is the one I'm working on now. I expect that this will go quickly. I mean, it, obviously the first section goes quickly because the rows aren't very long. But I expect that this one will go quickly and my hope is that I can finish it by the end of the month because then I can send everything off to the photographer and there will be a bunch of new um, fun kits for over the summer. So that is um, the project that uh, has seen quite a bit of my attention. Because my socks are done, I actually decided that it is time to cast on something new for myself. And I have been dying to make a sweater for a while now. And um, one of the things was, um, so you know that I, I purchased sweater quantities at various times, and I did purchase a sweater quantity when we were in Norway last August. And I was sort of waiting for a pattern to kind of hit me right. Um, I went looking at a lot of the, um, I, I thought for a while maybe I wanted it to be a Norwegian knitting pattern, and so I spent a lot of time looking for just the right um, sweater that I wanted and I didn't really find it. And so um, I just sort of sat and waited, figuring the right pattern would come to me. And I wanna say a couple months ago now, I was browsing through Instagram and I saw someone's version of this sweater and I was absolutely taken with it. And um, it is not, uh, it's interesting because I went back and looked and I think I remember the pattern coming out, um, but the it, I wasn't as taken with it. It's beautiful, but I wasn't as taken with it in um, the actual photo shoot. Um, for the pattern as I was when I actually saw a person wearing it. So let me show you the pattern. And um, the pattern is called Weatherwell and it is a fairly modern yoked sweater. It was designed by Kiyomi Burgeon who works for Amarisu. It was originally in the magazine. Um, I think it is available in the magazine or as a standalone pattern now. And it's just really cool. It's very graphic. It's got yoke shaping. Um, most of the sweater is actually pretty boring. There is a little bit of color work down at the cuffs and then there is um, most of the body and the sleeves are just stockinette stitch. It was knit in Pluto Lopi, which as you know is, well maybe you don't know, is um, kind of an almost a very, very, very minimally spun Icelandic wool. Um, it is very light and lofty um, and very, um, because it is almost not spun at all, um, it's almost just like draft, pin drafted roving. Um, it, it doesn't hold together super well in terms of like you can't, if you pull on it, literally pull it, pull it apart in the quote yarn form, it will come apart very, very easily and you can't seam with it. Um, however, if you knit it into um, an interlocking fabric, it actually is quite strong. So as you knit it, like you won't be able to pull your sweater apart. Um, and it is known for being incredibly, incredibly warm. Um, one of the things about Pluto Lopi though is that it is, um, it's made of Icelandic wool and Icelandic wool is definitely meant for outer wear as opposed to inner wear and so it is not very soft. Um, and I have tried to knit with Lopi and um, Lopi is the, um, it, so Lopi um, is the type of yarn I guess and um, there is kind of a worsted weight and then the Pluto Lopi is a little bit closer to fingering weight but it knits up at closer to like a sport or DK or worsted range because it fluffs up. So um, I got some yarn in Norway that is not really exactly the same, but I think I'm gonna be able to get a similar gauge at. So um, the yarn that I got in um, Norway is called um, Strickefeber. Well, of course I'm trying to kind of put German and I'm sure that's not how it's pronounced in, um, 
in Norwegian. Okay, Stricke is knitting, S-T-R-I-K-K-E, and Fever is fiber. So um, it is a yarn shop in Oslo um, by the name of, of Knitting Fiber. And uh, they produce a variety of their own yarns, or I mean, they might be just white label them. I don't know exactly. This is called Remerino, which is 50% merino and then 50% recycled fiber. And um, it is in a single. It is spun, but it is in a single and it is kind of fluffy. It looks like um, there are either some guard hairs or some mohair or definitely some other things in there. I'm trying to see if I can show you this. I don't know that it will show up super well, but it, but it is a little bit fluffy and it makes me think that um, it will bloom a little bit when I wash it and block it. Um, and I got, um, so my sweater is actually going to be the opposite of, um, it, it, it takes a little, it takes a little mental gymnastics, but so her sweater, the yoke is, um, red and then the body is kind of an oatmeal and I got more of this teal color than I did, um, the yoke color. So my body is going to be teal and then the color work is going to be this kind of mint here. And it's the same, it's the same yarn. I just got a few skeins in the mint color and I got more skeins in the um, blue color and, or the teal color. So I have enough to do this um, and I'm getting ready to cast on. And the first thing that I thought was I was like, oh yes, I'm going to swatch. Um, and then I looked and of course, because it's color work in the round, they want you to swatch in the round. Um, and I was like, that's fine. I'll just do one repeat of the yoke chart. But then I went and looked at the yoke chart and the yoke chart has the decreases in it because you're working this from the bottom up. And then when you get to the yoke, you are decreasing so that you have an appropriately sized sweater at the neck. Um, and then I read the pattern and it went, because it is starting from the bottom up, it wants you to start with the sleeves. So I decided that my swatch is going to be a sleeve cuff. So um, I did not start last night. I will start tonight. And um, my there is a little bit of color work. It's not really the same pattern. It's just a little bit of a diamond pattern, but it will enable me to, um, let me see if I can get you a, this is a better photo of the, okay. So this is a photo of the whole sweater and I'm trying to blow it up so that you won't, technically these are Ravelry photos, but I'm not showing any of the actual Ravelry screen. I'm just showing the photo. So I hope that that will not be an issue. This is the cuff. So you cast on in the um, in the contrasting color and then you work your color work and then you knit the sleeve. And the sleeve looks, um, actually, I'm not even sure if the sleeve is tapered to be quite honest. Um, it doesn't really look like it. Anyway, so my plan is to start with the sleeve and remember that will be kind of the dark on the background and the light as the accent and highlight. Um, and I think that's going to be fun. And then basically you knit the sleeve to where it's ready to join the body. And then I will do a lot of boring knitting on the body and get the body knit up to um, where everything joins. And so that will probably take me quite a while because it is kind of the boring knitting. The most fun will be at the end where I get to start doing the yoke pattern. So I'm very excited about that and I will bring you some progress. I'll at least bring you the sleeve to show you next week and let you know how my swatching worked out. Um, and so these are the two projects that I'm going to work on for now. I also have chickens in progress. Um, so that is kind of what I've been working on knitting. So let me take a quick sip of tea and then I will run through spinning and then we'll be done and I'll get you on your way. So I did not get as much spinning done as I had hoped. I don't know what happened, but I just didn't. I finished the first bobbin of... This is Kim Dye's yarn and it is City Rainbow. And remember it was white, it had lots of white in it and it had gray and then it had kind of neon pops of um, stripes like pinks and oranges and yellows and greens and blues and purples. And remember I said because of the white that it might end up coming out kind of pastel. That is kind of exactly what has happened. So, and it's really funny because I happen to work on this around Easter and it totally reminds me of Easter colors. Um, also, clearly I was not moving my bobbin in the right um, fashion. I do not have a woolly winder on my mini spinner. So I just move um, the sliding hooks when I see fit. And clearly I did not move them often enough to have kind of an even bobbin. But of course, because I was only spinning two ounces onto what is an eight ounce bobbin, it's not not a big deal. Um, this is the first half of City Rainbow. Um, the second half is halfway spun. So basically I have one more ounce to spin in singles. My guess is I'll do that tomorrow or Wednesday um, and then I will put this together and um, this will go in my um, in my shop. This is uh, BFL and silk which means it is uh, kind of long stapled. So it is a fairly hardy fiber. This actually would make fine socks um, because the silk also adds some um, shine and some strength to it. Um, it also is fairly soft, so it would be um, fine to wear close to the neck. 
I do not know how much yardage I will get in general. I get a little bit less on BFL than I get on some others. Um, so we'll just have to see, but I did spin it pretty thin here. So you can see, um, let me get my end out of the way cause that's not super helpful, but I did spin it pretty thin here. So, um, hopefully it won't be too dense. Um, my guess is my normal is about between a sport and a DK weight. So it's not like I'm spinning hugely thin these days anyway. Um, but that is the one I'm going to work on finishing this week and hopefully we'll have to show you next week. Um, and I went ahead and pulled out another braid of fiber to work on. Um, this is a fun braid of fiber that I got um, from Kumasi on Etsy. Um, and they are a fiber artist, a queer fiber artist in, I believe the San Francisco area. They have beautiful fiber. Um, none of their fiber has fiber names. Like they don't give any of their colorways names. So um, this was just a pretty purple one and it's got like a real dark kind of violet, almost black in here. Um, and then kind of a plum and then a little bit more of a burgundy. And I just thought this would be a fun one. This is on Corydale, which means I think this would make excellent socks. I use lots of Corydale for socks. Um, and I'm going to spin this one up and pop it in the shop. So if your thing is purples, keep an eye out um, in the next couple weeks and that one will be going into the shop. So that is all I have to share with you today. I hope that you have a lovely week ahead, that it doesn't storm too much near where you are. I can hear the thunder. I, I don't think you can hear it, but I can start to hear the thunder rolling again. So it sounds like we're about to get some more rain. Um, I hope that you are having um, a good week where you are, that you are staying healthy, that you are finding lots of crafty mojo. And I will say, as I always do, happy knitting, happy spinning, happy sipping. And I'll see you next time. Bye.